Hello, 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 and welcome to our second night of revival with the Winning in Prayer Global Network. Amen. We are excited as always to be a part of such a great move. We first give honor to God who's the head of our life, the Holy Spirit. We thank God for Apostle Dara and Pastor Tammy for um, allowing God to use them to bring forth this um, spirit of revival. And we are praying that the people's lives are shifting and changing and to becoming more who God want them to be through this revival. And one of my prayer for the revival that has been going on since September is that the people will experience a personal revival. Amen. So again, we do thank you for joining us. I am Apostle Dr. Sakitha Yancey. I am your kingdom instructor. Um, thank you for joining us as we set our hearts and our minds to hear and receive from God tonight regarding meeting God in the secret place. Now, last night we talked about seeking God's face and God wants us to seek him because he wants us to know him and become intimate with him. And the way that we are going to get to know God in this way of intimacy, we're going to meet him in the secret place. So we thank God for all of you joining us tonight. We are excited. So as I always like to say, get your Bible, get your notepad, get your pen, get your highlighters, bring your open heart, bring it ready to receive from God. If you will pull, we will give you what God say tonight. I know that God has a word and he has a word for us. He's taking us a little, a little bit higher. Last night, we talked about seeking his face. Tonight, we're going to meet God in the secret place of prayer. Meeting God in the secret place of prayer. Tonight, I hope, I, I'm not hope, I have my teacher's hat on. So we're going to teach the word and we're going to pour into you now. We get a little excited. Y'all just roll with me, ride with me till we get it all out. And we, Because God is going to do something through us tonight, amen, and for us. So meeting God in the secret place of prayer, this is the place that God longs to transform us and make us more like him. But it happens in the secret place. Somebody say in the secret place. This is the place that after I've sought God, now that I'm in his presence, he longs to transform us and make us to be more like him. And it only happens when we get in this secret place. This is the place where change happens and when we fix our eyes on him and let him shed light into dark places in our lives. And Satan power is um, significantly less when light has been shed. So our foundation scripture tonight will come from the book of Matthew chapter six. And we're going to look at verses five through eight. And we're going to read it from the New King James Version. So it is Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, meeting God in the secret place of prayer. And we all understand what prayer is, is communicating with God. But I want us to go a little bit further. We're going to ask, we're going to seek, we're going to knock, we're going to meet God. We're going to rendezvous with God in this place because God longs for us to be there. Just like he longs for us to seek his face, he longs for us to be in this secret place. I want to give you a secret. Come close to the camera. Come close. Put your ears up. I want you to know that in this secret place, come on somebody, this is where God is going to meet you and provide you with everything that you need. I wanted you to know that. I also want you to know, just like last night, when you get in this secret place, he will not disappoint you. He will not disappoint you. So let's go to the scripture. Matthew 6, 5 through 8, New King James Version says, 
And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we can be very hypocritical in our prayers and we can begin to boast about how long we pray and how many hours we've been in there. No, don't be like the hypocrites. He said, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. See, when you go into the secret place, you are going in and in this place, come a little closer again, this is a place where it is a audience of one. And it's just you and God. You don't have to perform. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to pretend. You can just be who God created you to be because this is a place in this secret place, it is an audience of one. And it's just you and God. So you can take off your mask. You can take your makeup off. You can let your hair down. You can you can stop pretending. Come on, somebody. And you can be who you were created to be. This is the place. He said, for they, were, they love to pray standing in the synagogue on the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. See, in this place... You, you will not be seen of me and it's just you and God. So you can stop pretending. I want somebody to know in the secret place, in the meeting place with God, you don't have to pretend anymore. You can be who you really want to be in God's presence. Come on, take your hair down, take your makeup off and say, God, this is me. And I am here because I have an audience of one. And when you have that audience, then you know that you need to give God all of your heart because it's just you and God. So let's read on. He said, oh, surely I say to you, they have their reward. Those that are, are, are want to be seen by men, you have your reward. But there is a greater reward from, for, from God when we go in this place with him. But you, verse number six, when you pray, Listen, but when you, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, when you shut the door, when you put everybody out, when you silence all the voices, when you come to that place, that's me and God and you shut the door. <clears throat> Listen at what he said. Pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will do what reward you openly verse number seven and when you pray don't you use vain repetition as the heathens do um for they think that they will be heard for their many words verse number eight therefore do not be like them. Let me say that again. Do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you asked him. Meeting God in the secret place. Why do I want to meet God in the secret place? I'm glad you asked. God desires that we meet him in the secret place as a bride and a groom was still away to a secret place to know one another in the most intimate level. What are you saying, apostle? God want you to meet him here because he want you to get to know him on such a level that you have never known him before. Like I said on last night, we know what our mom and our dad and what the pastor says and what this was said. But in this place, you're going to get to know God uh, in a more intimate way in this meeting place, this secret place. Now that I've sought after God, now that I've sought after his face, not after his hand, I'm going to meet him just as a bride and a groom was still away to a secret place to know one another in a most intimate level in their relationship. So we are going to develop a more intimate relationship with God. So our heavenly father, he begins to beckon us to steal away to a secret place up for him in prayer. When you sense the wooing and when you sense God beckoning you to come, 
I want to encourage you tonight. Don't miss this opportunity to have be, to be imparted into because this is the time that it's just you and God and everybody else is out of the way. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to put on airs. You can just be who you are in the meeting place because this is the place that God uh, wants to impart wisdom. To, for you to make his word come alive to you. Why? Because he needs you to know him in a more intimate way. Somebody know, I am going to know God in a more intimate way. In this secret place, we are getting to know him in such a new and incredible way. I am getting to know God in a more intimate way. I, my prayer is through these three nights and all the nights that we've had of the revival is that you're now getting to a new place in God and you're getting to know him in a more excellent way, in a more incredible way. Things that you did not know about God, now that you've started to seek him on a different level and now you're going into the intimate place or you're going to the meeting place and it's a secret place called prayer, you're getting to see a side of God that you've never seen before. That is my prayer for all of us, that we get to know God in a more excellent way, that what I've learned, I've learned this about you, God, and I've heard this about you, God, but now that I'm coming to the secret place to meet you, I'm coming because I desire to know more of you. I desire to know your character. I desire to know your heart. I desire to know your fragrance. I to desire to know what breaks your heart. So I am coming to meet you in this secret place of prayer that I may know you, oh God, in a more excellent way. Listen, he said this. I hope that you know that he is worthy for you to meet him there. He is worthy of you meeting him in the secret place. I hope that you and I will make time to meet God in the secret place. After tonight, after you've heard the word, my prayer, my God, is that your passion is ignited. First of all, in prayer, your passion is ignited to get in God's presence like never before. Say, you know, God, I heard the word. That there is a more excellent way. There is a more, there's a more incredible way. There's a, there's another level of you that I need to know about. Come on, somebody. We need to know God in the days to come. You need to know so much about your heavenly father that if somebody says anything other than what you have experienced, you're going to know immediately that it did not come from God. It's not just we're going to go in and we just, no, you're going to know him. So when his presence show up, you will know, my God, the father has entered the room. His presence has entered in. Why? I've saw on his face. I've met him in the secret place. I've gotten intimate with him. I, intimate means he in me and I am in him. I am getting to know him on another level that I did not know him before. Tonight, my prayer is that you know God on a level that you have never experienced him before. And I believe that we all shall get that. Why? Because my desire is to get to know God. So I got to meet God in the secret place of prayer. Come on, somebody. Prayer is where we're going to meet him. Prayer is where we're going to meet him. Yes, Pastor Tammy, we are doing different levels of prayer. And this is meeting God in the secret place of prayer. There's a secret place that God wants to meet you. Why? He delights in you and he wants to walk closely with you. He delights in you. It's awesome to know that our Heavenly Father, with all the people in the world, he delights to know me, little Osakita. He delights to know me. And not only do he delight to know me, he desires to walk closely with me. And if that's his desire for me, guess what, people of God? I desire to walk close with God. I want to know him 
so much that I don't care what somebody say, it doesn't shift me or it doesn't change my view of who God is. Why? Because I know him. Ah, listen, though we can encounter God at church and, and through people, nothing compares to the encounter we with God in the secret place. It is different because in the churches and in through people, we got to share him with everybody. But in this place, when I encounter God in the secret place, when I'm still away with God, it's just me and God. And I don't have to um, compete for his attention. And I don't have to bet. I just go in and it's an audience of one. And it's just me and God meeting God in the secret place. Listen. Nothing compares to our encounter with God in the secret place. Listen, the secret place, put in your notes, is a place where it is just you and God. I, I want to emphasize that. It is just you and God. It is a place where your heart is still enough to hear only his voice. I believe I will, Prophetess Janelle, to come on through. In this place, your heart is still enough where you can hear his voice and his voice only. Yes, he just you and God. It's the place where you surrender everything. In this place, you surrender. You wave the white flag and say, God, I surrender. I submit. I bow down. I come where it's just all of you and less of me i humble myself i make myself low in his presence so that he can be who he wants to be in my life this is the place the meeting place is where i surrender everything sit at his feet listen at his word that will bring life to me not only to me listen listen when he gives you life He's not only giving it just for you. When you come out, you're going to come out with your with what your family need. You're going to come out with strategies to come out of debt. You're going to come out with ways to further your ministry. You're going to come out with strategies how to mend broken relationships. Come on, somebody. When I get in his presence, I go in to learn of him. I let him pour into me. I let him develop me. I let him heal me. If there's the deliverance that need bless, I allow him to take me through deliverance. So when I come out, I come out with life. Hallelujah. And that life is abundant life. And I'm able to share it huh, with my brothers and my sister. Come on, somebody. Listen. When the in the meeting place uh, or in the secret place where we meet God, true transformation happens. Transformation. When I go in, I may go in one way, but when I come out, uh, Sister Lee, I am transformed. I am changed. In the secret place, this is where I am being changed and transformed to be who God created me to be, to be the loving person that he created me to be, to no longer be broken, to no longer huh, to be discouraged, to no longer to be disappointed because in that place, this is where God healed me. He mends me. He mends my broken heart. He heals my mind. Come on, somebody. He renews me. He refreshes me. He strengthens me. He restores me. He builds me up. My passion is rekindled. My love is ignited. Come on, somebody. When I go in this place of transformation, I come out change. I come out change every time. So every time I get and go into the secret place with God, I should be forever changing and transforming more to be in his image and in his likeness. Come on, somebody. Why? When we go to the secret place, it is also, he, he also shows us that we don't just meet him there. We meet his rewards there. Oh, come on, somebody. Just like he told us last night, if we seek his face, he'll give us what's in his hand. 
So when I get in this secret place, Sister King, with God and just humble myself before him, allow him to do what he wants to do with me and through me and in me, I then come out with a reward. Ah, Not only just for me, but for all those that are with me, all those that are around me, all those that I come in contact with, because I want to say this to every one of you that are online. Any, every time you get in the presence of God, and God began to, to meet you there. He began to pour his life into you. When you come out, you're coming out transformed. Change forevermore. Yes, that's right, Elder Pooh, Elder Pooh. But guess what? Your life then, you come out and you are able to, and I like to use the word, able to compensate others when you get in, come in their presence. What do you mean, Apostle? When I meet you after, like tonight, the word that God is giving unto me has come from a secret place. I'm going to leave you compensated. I'm going to leave you better off than you were when you got here. I'm going to pour into you everything that God has given unto me to pour into you. So therefore, I'm leaving you compensated. I'm not going to leave you empty handed. Whatever he gave me, I'm going to pour into you. And that's the mindset that we must all have when we come out of the secret place. Yes, I got something for me, but I also got something for my brother, for my sister, for my husband, for my children, for my mother, for my grandchildren. Come on, somebody. For those that are in the ministry, I got something. Leaders, let me talk to the leaders tonight. Senior leaders, prophets, evangelists, whatever your calling, your gifting is. It is vitally important that you meet God in the secret place of prayer. Why? You gonna go in there that God may fill you again. Because we as leaders, we give out so much. And this is the place where we can go in and we can tell God all that troubles our heart. God, this trouble my heart and this bothers me and allow God to soothe us uh, and heal us and make us over. So when we go back to the people, we are a healed leader. We are a healed person and we are not bleeding on the people. Oh my God, Lord Jesus, I thank you. God reward those who diligently seek him according to Hebrews 11 and 6. By revealing himself and transforming us through the revelation of his word. When we get in this place, this meeting place with God, this secret place of prayer, God transform us through his word, the spoken word, his heart. He transform us. Leaders, let God transform you. So often we give out so much. And we need that one-on-one -on -one with God. Shut everything out. Turn off your phone. Let's get to the meeting place with God in prayer and allow God to pour into us. And when he pours into us and builds us back up, then we are able to go back and compensate the people and build them. A, hear my heart tonight. Meet God in the secret place, leaders. Come on. Sometimes we are running on empty and we're trying to lead God's people. Oh my God. I, I'm going to flow with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we are leading, uh, we're leading the people on empty. But tonight, hear my heart, I encourage you as leaders to go and meet God in the secret place. This is the place of prayer. This is the place where you can be you. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to pretend. Come on, somebody. You don't have to pretend that it's all well. You don't have to pretend that you got it all together. Go to the secret place and say, God, I'm going to let my hair down. Or I'm going to take my hat off. Excuse me. Which, whichever. And say, I come for you to pour into me. I'm not asking you for anything. I come just for to meet you in this place that you pour into me so that when I go out and I meet your people, I come back with compensation for them. I have an answer for them. I got something to give them. Come on. We don't need to doubt God is there. He hears us. 
he can be found in the secret place. Let us never forsake spending time with God in the secret place. Matthew told us, shut the door. In other words, put everything out. Turn it off. Pull yourself down. Come down. Take off your collars. Take your jacket off. Take whatever it is. Take it off. And say, God, it's just me and you. I come to be restored. I come to be transformed. I come to be built up. I come to be healed. I need some deliverance. Come on, God. I need my passion rekindled because sometimes if we be true for leader, sometimes our passion goes away. Ah, oh, yeah, our passion goes away. And so we have to get back in the presence of God for it to be rekindled. Come on now, rekindle. Let God re, um, rekindle it, re, um, ignite it again. Amen. So listen, never forsake spending time with God in the secret place. If we live outside of intimacy and fellowship with God, we will only find ourselves falling short of being able to live that life that pleased him. Let me say that again. If we live outside of intimacy and fellowship with God, the meeting place is a place of fellowship. This is where I go to fellowship with God, to reason, to talk, to bring my heart to God. It's not that God doesn't know, but there are times we just have to empty ourselves of ourselves and allow God to fill us again. That's for all of us, the leaders, the ushers, the greeters, the altar workers, whatever you find yourself in, lay members, husband, wife, children, we go in the meeting place to fellowship with God. We go to have communion with him. We go to sit at his feet and say, Father, I'm here. I'm here. I've heard about the meeting place and I'm here. I'm here. I'm not I'm not going to ask you for anything. I'm just going to sit in your presence. I'm going to allow you to feel me again. Somebody shout, God, feel me again. Feel me again. Because there are times when we're running on fumes. And we give up. Whether we're in ministry, whether we mar your marriage whether you're on a job, come on, whether you work in your business, because people are pulling on you, you need God to fill you again. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You need God to fill you again and fill you with his presence and fill you with his love and fill you with his joy and fill you with his kindness and fill you with his meekness and his long suffering. Feel, 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 F-I-L-L, feel you again. You need to be filled because you're running on empty. And you need to meet God in the meeting place. Tonight, you need to meet God. Because the, the moment that we find ourselves running empty, let me just get real with us. We start snapping at people. We start saying harsh words. Come on, somebody. Been there, done it. Amen. That's why I can tell you. We're not showing the love of God. So I need somebody to shout tonight, feel me again. You can lift your hands in your home. And you can lift your hands up and you can tell God, God, feel me again. Feel me until my cup is running over with you. Come on. This is your time. Tell, tell God to fill you. I got to pause because this is what I hear the Father saying unto us. Tell, tell them to, to let me fill them again. If they will meet me in the secret place, I will fill them again. Because we are so full of junk and we're so full of gossip and we're so full of mess that God cannot get into that place with you. But I want you to... I want you to empty yourself tonight 
as you begin to get in the meeting place with God before you go in that secret place right there on the outer court. I want you to begin to empty yourself. Get rid of what they said and get rid of their opinions and get rid of what how they thought of you. Get rid of how they lied on you. Get rid of how they mistreated you. Get rid of who didn't validate you. Get rid of who didn't call your name. Get rid of who didn't invite you to their service. Get rid of all that because, because God said, I want to feel you again. I want to feel your heart again. I want to fill your heart with love. I want to fill your heart with joy. I want to fill you up so much with so much of me that whatever caused you to be broken, huh? We will no longer break you. Why? Because you're so filled with God. Come on, somebody. This is the time to get in the meeting place with God and know that God has come to transform you. But I want you to lift your heart hands by faith tonight. Do it by faith and say, God, she's talking to me. I am running on empty and I need you to fill me again. Revival is about being a better you. Tonight, you'll be going to meet God in the meeting place or the secret place so that he can fill you up again. Fill me up again, Lord. Fill my heart. Fill my love. Fill me up with love. My love has been depleted. My joy has been depleted. Come on now. I have long suffering of patience with people. So I need you to feel me. I'm coming to the meeting place with you. And I need you to feel me again. Come on, somebody. God, I need you to transform my life, transform my mind, transform the way I think, transform my thought life, transform how I see people. I know I no longer want to see people the way people see him. That's right, Prophet Mill. Fill me up again. We give out so much and we need God to fill us. And the only way you are not going to get filled tonight is we meet God in the secret place of prayer. There are times when you're praying. You don't have to go in telling God everything. He knows. Just say, fill me, God. Fill me. Fill me up. I'm running on empty. Fill me up. I'm running. I'm running on empty. I've given out so much. I'm running on empty. Fill me up. Never forsake spending time with God in the secret place. Never forsake spending time with God. Every chance that you and I get, we should be in his face. Because there is so many things that are contending for our attention. But in this place, in this secret place, it's just you and God and only God gets your attention. Come on, somebody. Because I'm in the secret place with God, living outside of intimacy and fellowship with God, you only find yourself falling short of being able to live the life that please God. I want to live a life that please God. So I'm going to find myself being in his presence more and more. Listen. I'm walking this word just like you walking in and I'm giving it out just as God give it to me. Because yes, Sister Tracy, we be running on empty. Fill us up and we can just be real with ourselves. Because sometimes we won't get real with us. And we go into the meeting place and we talk more than God. But tonight, you're not going in doing all that talking. You're just going to say, Lord, I, I heard the word. Fill me up. Fill me up. I'm, I will no longer forsake spending time with you in this secret place. So we need to always remember to spend time. Listen, the word of Jesus and Paul challenges us to stir our hearts. Jesus said, the father is in the secret place of prayer. Paul asked, pray without ceasing. But how and where do we find this secret place? I'm glad you asked. To dwell in the secret place means to live in a place of continually drawing near to the Father through communion, through communion, through fellowship. It is a place where you and I talk to him in the morning, at night, and throughout the day without the motivation of people recognizing us. In the meeting place with God, in the meeting God in the secret place, 
this is the place where we are motive, we are in a place and we are not motivated by people. Because oftentimes we'll stand and we'll pray and we'll say we're doing this. It's because we want people to pat us on the back. We want people to tell us job well done. But in this place, you're going to be motivated without the motivation of people recognizing you. You're going to be motivated because you're in the presence of your father. And only the pure desires to know him in this secret place. My only reason for coming to this place is to desire a pure desire to know him in a more excellent way that he may feel me dwelling in the secret place or meeting God in the secret place of prayer doesn't only have to be with all all going in our bedrooms or our closet or our cars. We can pray watching TV. You can pray uh, on the way to the job. You can walk around your yard and pray. You find a place to meet him. You find a place. You find a place. Get engaged. Get engaged in the fellowship with God. Never leave God's presence. Consistently coming before him with sweet communion with the Lord moment by moment. Pure desire, yes, in a more excellent way, moment by moment. I do this thing moment by moment. Create a space, create place in your heart. Come on. We can go to the bedroom, we can go to the closet. But that the heart is was ah, crowded. So tonight I want you to dethrone it. Take everything out unclog or unpack those rooms so that it will be just you and God and God can feel every space of your heart moment by moment. Ah, listen, this is what you and I were created for. We were created to live in daily fellowship with the Father, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to bear his Im image, to a lost and a dying world. Amen. The meeting, the meeting God in the secret place is a place and not a duty. It's a place and not a duty. A secret place in the spirit. There, there, our relationship with God, first of all, is established. And from there, everything we ask according to his will. It's given to us. Come on, somebody. I hear it again. Somebody needs to shout, fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. The secret place is not a duty. Listen, when Jesus was on the earth, he would often pray alone in the desert. We can choose any place and dedicate it as a specific place for prayer. In the natural, we all need a physical place to represent the spiritual place where we all meet God on a daily basis. However, in order to fully experience his presence of God, we must recognize, I need you to hear me tonight, recognize that the atmosphere of that place is more important than the place itself. The atmosphere of your secret place is more important than the place itself. What do you mean, Apostle? Oftentimes, when we want to meet God in the secret place, we want to take music and we want to take this and we want to take that. But in this place, I'm going to create an atmosphere where it's just me and God. I don't need nobody else in there. I don't need nobody else praying for me. I don't need no songs playing in there. I want it just me and God. We're going to make our own music. We're going to make sweet communion together. I'm going to create an atmosphere with my worship and with my praise. Because, see, we can praise God as long as the music going. We can worship God as long as the music going. But when we in this place and it's just me and God, 
Can you praise and worship him from a pure place? Come on. He's calling us higher. Because in this place, you don't need anything but your sincere heart and your worship and your praise to your God. Telling him how great he is. Telling him how wonderful he is. Telling him how magnificent he is. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I glorify your name. Father, I didn't come to ask you nothing. I just come to love on you. I'm creating my atmosphere. I'm creating the room without distraction. That's right, without the distraction. Remove them. I'm creating an atmosphere for me and God. And I begin to praise him and worship him from a pure heart, from a pure place, from a place where I'm not propped by music or propped by people watching me. It's just me and God. And I'm singing and I'm praising unto him. God, I worship you. I adore you, oh God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I adore your holy name. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Great and mighty are you, oh God. Thankful are you, oh God. I do glorify you. I'm creating an atmosphere for just me and God. I'm making it about God and I'm creating this atmosphere. And it's not, my atmosphere is more important than the place that I'm in. So if I learn how to create an atmosphere in that place of audience as one, when we come together corporately, that same anointing should follow me and we corporately can create an atmosphere for the presence of God to show up. There are times when if I know how to do it, in the secret place, when I come out the secret place, that same atmosphere should follow me. And when we come together corporately, we don't need the music. All we got to begin to do is worship from our heart, praise from our heart, lift up holy hands in the presence of God. And the atmosphere is set for healing, for deliverance, for breakthrough for transformation, for souls to be saved. Come on, somebody. When the presence of God shows up, the glory of God shows up, it comes and it brings things. It brings transformation. It brings healing. It brings deliverance. If God brings what we need, if we learn to create the atmosphere in this secret place, come on, somebody. Come on. Time out for pretending. It's time to really worship God in spirit and in truth. And I'll learn how to do it in the secret place where nobody is looking and nobody is watching. And when I come corporately, it's not a problem. Whether I have music or not, I, I can create it. Why? Music, it's in me. Worship in me. Praise is in me. I don't need the extra. Yes, it will help it. But what if I don't have it? I don't have to have it to create an atmosphere. I should have been in the presence of God to say, you know what? That atmosphere is following me. Come on, somebody. Listen, there is nowhere on the earth where the presence of God is absent. No matter how hidden it may be. Nevertheless, although the Lord is everywhere, listen at this. He does not manifest his presence everywhere. His presence manifests only, listen, because I can hear the religious minds turning. Nevertheless, although the Lord is everywhere, he does not manifest his presence everywhere. Why? His presence manifests only where he is worshipped in spirit and in truth. According to John 4, 23 through 24. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him. How? in spirit and in truth. The Passion Translation says, 
from now on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place with the, the from now on worshiping worshiping the father will not be a matter of a right place but with a right heart when i learn to worship him and create the atmosphere in the secret place and my heart is right there when i get corporately it's not about the place that i'm in it's about my heart being right before god for god is spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. Now, let us look closely again at Matthew 6 and 6 from the, trans, um, the Passion Bible. It says this, but whenever you pray, go into your innermost chamber. Be alone with the Father. The Father God prayed to him in secret, and your Father who sees all you do will reward you openly. Here, Jesus taught that when we pray, we should go into our room, a place of prayer, shut ourselves in with God, and speak to him with faith and trust as a little child speaks to their father. Our Heavenly Father will always be waiting for us there. When we learn to pray in the secret place or meet God in the secret place, we will find that nothing and no one else is more important to us than God. In that place, we are alone with our Creator, the King of Kings, Lord God Almighty, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God, the El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. Come on, we're there with him. Elohim, we're there with him. The one who knows everything, including the state of the person's heart. That's why you don't have to go in pretending because he knows the state of your heart. This is the place that you can be real with God. And when you're real with God in the secret place, you will be real with your brothers and sisters outside. Come on. The secret place teaches us how to be genuine. The world is looking for those that are genuine, that know Christ. They want to be drawn by our realness. Come on, people. They're hungry. They're looking. They're searching. Listen, including the state of their heart. When our hearts make us feel guilty and reminds us of our failures, we know that God is greater and more merciful than our conscience. And he knows everything there is to know about us. Listen, I'm almost done. There is a secret place of prayer or the meeting God in the secret place is where we submerge ourselves in communion with God. And in this place, we don't want to leave. We get so excited that we cannot wait to get back there. That's the passionate side of it. That is what I want to relay to us tonight, that I want your passion of seeking and meeting God in the secret place to be ignited like never before. I want you to long and crave God. That you that you just carve out time. That you just say, you know what? I got to go spend time. That Like my lunch break, I'm going to spend this hour with God. I'm creating time. I'm, I'm carving out time. God, I've gotten so passionate about knowing you. I've heard the word. I've heard that I need to seek your face. Now I got to meet you in the secret place. We are passionate about being alone with our Father. And let me, let me tell you somebody tonight, that pleases God. Yes, quality time with God. When was the last time, if we could be real, that we spent quality time with God? I'm not talking about what nobody else does. Because oftentimes, we'll, spend, we'll say, oh, I spent five hours in prayer. I spent six hours. But was it quality? Were you rushing through? 
Or were you doing it to be recognized by man? No. This time it's just you and God. God, I'm going to meet you here. It's just me and you. I'm going to steal away. And it's me and you. Nobody here. I ain't got to improve. I ain't got to impress nobody. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. I don't have to pray like Brother John. I can pray just like you want me to pray. Come on, somebody. I don't have to compete with nobody. I can just come in your presence. And guess what? He's pleased with that. Being in his presence or being in the presence of God is wonderful. We will no longer worry about what people or our what people say or our problems or fears or doubt. If while we are praying and we are thinking about other things, we are not truly in God's presence because he becomes our complete reality. In meeting God in the secret place, listen, I'm going to you in my heart. He will then become your reality. Come on, somebody. This is the place that he wants to meet us. This is the place. Let me drop you a nugget. Every prayer begins when we recognize we are in the presence of God. Remember, no matter where you go, God is with you. Even if we don't feel his presence, he's there. The Psalms says in Psalms 139 and 8, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Listen, true prayer, true praise. Therefore, it includes a consciousness of being in the presence of the almighty God. To know God's presence, I need to set my affections on him. In this place, in the meeting place with God, this is where I set my affections on him and him alone. That's why I don't need anybody else in there. I fix my attention on him. Come on, y'all. Listen, our consistency in prayer or meeting God in the secret place can be measured by the level of the presence and the power of God we carry. Listen, let me say that again. Our consistent in meeting God in the secret place of prayer can be measured by the level of the presence and the power of God that we carry. The presence of God dwells within every believer at all times. It is not shut away somewhere in a building. When we, when we are fully aware of this reality and spend time in fellowship with our Father in the secret place, then and we will then go and have and create an atmosphere where his presence is always welcome. Come on, somebody. His presence is always welcome in that place. Listen, it is time that we learn how to meet God in this place. Prayer is a place or the secret place of prayer is where we obtain power in greater levels to deal with any demonic forces or anything that will try to attack us. We gain power, we gain strength. In the meeting place of God, in this place, this is where we submit to the Lordship of Christ. We submit to his Lordship. Let me give you another nugget. Spiritual power and authority are obtained by submission to the Lordship of Christ. Meeting God in the secret place of prayer is the place of sufferings of suffering of Christ. Philippians 3 and 10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. The apostle Paul wrote, the apostle Peter wrote, therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind for he has, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Listen, prayer is the place of fellowship with the sufferings of Christ because it requires obedience and self-denial. In the meeting place with God, 
I hope you're taking notes. This is going to require your obedience and your self-denial. Why? Jesus told his disciples, watch and pray, lest you fall or enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our flesh is weak. Therefore, most of the time, it doesn't want to meet God in the secret place. If we will be honest, because our flesh is weak, there are times that it does not want to meet God in the secret place. But I say to you tonight, buffet it, put it on a fast so that you can meet God in the secret place. Amen. So I thank God for you allowing me to come to your home tonight to share the word of God. Listen, in through this teaching, I wanted to relay the most important thing is that we, we have to see God's face and then there's a meeting place that God wants to meet us. And it is a secret place and it is called prayer. In this place, we should be intentionally, there will be privacy, there will be intimacy, and there will be integrity in, those, in that place with God. Amen. In, when you enter this secret place, in this revelation about the secret place of prayer or meeting God in the secret place, this is where our creator is and we are transformed. God expects us to daily enter his presence, a place where the spiritual power and activity are released to know his heart, to receive his authority. He longs for us to enter this place of submission and suffering where the keys of the kingdom are found. In this place, you're going to find keys for the kingdom. You're going to find keys for life. You're going to kind of find keys for your health. You're going to find keys for your marriage. You're going to find the things that you need to be successful in your life because God is going to give them to you. So the keys of the kingdom are fine. This is where we gain territories and where we receive favor in the meeting place with God. Do not ignore the urge to meet the, your father in the presence of, in the secret place. So I want you to know that in this place, I'm almost done. Listen, and you will hear him say, meet me in the secret place of prayer. You and I cannot, hear my heart, you and I cannot afford to miss this opportunity to be with our father upon his arrival because he's going to meet us there. In my final words, let us commit to meeting God in the secret place of prayer, to break through prayer in the secret place that it can enable us to live a victorious life and lead us into celebrating our coming king. Also, the secret place is the place where you and I position ourselves to be transformed by God. As we learn to enter the secret place, shed the door, commune with God, our souls will be changed. Our souls will be charged. Our souls will be healed. We will be delivered. We will be made whole. We will be reignited. We will be reignited. We will be rekindled. Our passion will be renewed. We will grow a deeper intimacy with God. We will experience a greater joy. We will enjoy a large impact of fruitfulness and receive a deeper calmness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the secret place of your presence. Help us never to forget that we need your presence more than anything else in life. Father, may the blessings of the secret place be manifested openly so that others will see and desire to be with you also. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we close again, thank you for allowing us to come into your homes for our second night of revival. As we continue in the spirit of revival, we are believing that you will experience God in a more excellent way, that your hearts will be transformed. Mm -hmm.